Okay, it's always running. Good. So our next speaker is uh, Shupan Padia, who has been a, a great supporter and uh, of the project for a long time, involved as a developer, involved on many different layers, also like helped uh, just like Subtag uh, um, to deploy the project here and, and run Eventia. So we have a great system here to use at uh, the Force Asia Summit. And uh, maybe know before you start, what's your background, where you are from, and uh, like. Uh, from India, yeah. apparently, but whereabouts in India, uh, university, and so on? What, what's your background? Um, I'm from uh, Rajkot, uh, Gujarat, in India, and uh, I study at uh, Triple IT, Allahabad, and uh, that's in the uh, in the east of India. Make sure you have your microphone yourself. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, you talk about can convention over configuration, open event, and JSON API. Thank you very much. And here uh, are you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'll be um, mainly talking about. Uh, Hang on, let's do, let's do Test. 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 So I'll be mainly talking about uh, why we use the uh, JSON API spec. Uh, myself, Shivam, I uh, did uh, GSOC last summer uh, with FOSS Asia uh, under the Open Event project. I was also a GCM mentor for FOSS Asia last year, and I was one of the grand prize winner of uh, Code Heat uh, conducted last year. So. Uh, as Saptak described, uh, the API we had in the, uh, in the old system had some basic functionalities like uh, the basic authentication, uh, role-based control, role-based control uh, like uh, admins, organizer, co-organizers, uh, and uh, basic root operations. So although uh, we had an API, uh, we, uh, we went using it uh, in the front end to make requests and retrieve data. The API was uh, actually uh, built sep uh, separately uh, as a way for third party applications uh, to uh, pl uh, plug in into open event and fetch the data. So uh, as it was not well used in the first iteration, the API was not very well developed, only a few uh, crude operations were there and all the information was not available. Uh, we used the uh, Swagger docs uh, for displaying uh, the documentation uh, although Swagger docs generally follow the open API specification, uh, we didn't uh, adhere to any structure at all. Uh, so it was just some uh, uh, JSON structured responses at that time. Uh, so what we first needed uh, was uh, a proper relationship de uh, definitions. We started looking out for uh, API specification and uh, the first thing was proper uh, because we have a lot of uh, roles uh, like you have an organizer co-organizer uh, track moderator uh, registrar and uh, uh, each each track has multiple sessions each room has multiple sessions so there are a lot of relationships and it uh, becomes quite convoluted to uh, code it in uh, uh, via a regular uh, J json framework uh, another, thi another thing we wanted built in uh, was sortering, so, uh, sorry, sorting, uh, uh, filtering, and uh, pagination. So. Uh, so JSON API. So uh, JSON API is a sp uh, specification for how the client should uh, request the resources and how the uh, server should uh, respond. Uh, it mainly uh, minimizes the number of requests and uh, uh, gives a focus on uh, uh, caching the data uh, so that uh, you don't have to re uh, regularly uh, keep making uh, requests to the server. Uh, why JSON API? JSON API follows the uh, convention over configuration uh, ideology. Uh, 
a convention of a configuration means uh, th there's a convention at place which you have to follow. There's, there's no other option. You uh, ca uh, cannot configure things. But that doesn't mean that you lose the f uh, flexibility of, uh, of, uh, of, of the API. Uh, it reduces the number of choices a developer has to make and eases the, co is the, eases the collaboration it in a team. Uh, see, a FOSS uh, projects have uh, usually have a large number of uh, contributors. Uh, we participate in GCI, GSOC, and students come, uh, contribute for a month or two, sometimes uh, maybe more, and uh, they, they go back. Uh, so uh, we need to make sure that all the uh, API uh, written follows a certain specification. Uh, it, it's uh, hard to collaborate if uh, we're following a, a, a random structure uh, without adhering to any specification. Uh, one of the major advantages of JSON API are compound documents. So it allows uh, related resources to be uh, included alongside the uh, HTTP request. So in a normal API, if you are requesting a track data, so you only get that track only. But uh, with JSON API, you can uh, include uh, these sessions uh, related to the track, and uh, you can also page in at that. So only a number, a number of, uh, say, first five sessions will be included in the track. Uh, it could de uh, decrease the number of necessary HTTP requests uh, for example, uh, if you have a uh, post management system, so uh, your post can include the author object. So the author's user profile will be included along with the post. A sparse fields, uh, field sets. So uh, we have actually we uh, for for an, um, for any normal event, uh, we have. Uh, 25 to 20, uh, 30 fields for for a single event. If you if you fill out the uh, whole form, you we have 25 to 30 fields, and the uh, front end may not need them all uh, at at some point of time. So uh, you can uh, uh, you can specify uh, uh, which which fields to include uh, by uh, uh, by that type uh, like fields articles equals to title so only the uh, the title uh, will come and the body will come uh, nothing else will come uh, this is a normal uh, json api response uh, there's uh, every every json api response has a uh, uh, data uh, object, data JSON object in the root, and uh, this one is when we include an object. So th there's this article, and the included author, uh, who has the type people, the ID, and their attributes. So uh, uh, with a single request, I can f uh, fetch the author, and uh, there's much less uh, request overhead. Uh, this is the example of uh, pagination. Uh, so uh, uh, there are lots of articles uh, in the uh, event management system. Uh, the, uh, then uh, the links of the uh, current article that you're retrieving, the first of, of that collect collection, and the previous and the next uh, will be displayed along with that. Uh, the, the document must uh, contain one of uh, these three, uh, the, the data, uh, if errors, if any present, and uh, uh, the meta part. Uh, if, yeah. This one for what? You have any handphone right now?
get the feedback. Okay. So just put it far away as possible, okay? Okay. No, 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 the receiver is there. Uh, please, yeah, take out this one. This one? Cables because they're different receivers. Yeah? Okay, sure. So, do we have everything on? Yeah. Okay. Test. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll be continuing with the uh, document structure. Uh, if, uh, if there's any error, uh, the error is also uh, a JSON object, and uh, an, error, uh, an error response should not have a data root in that uh, response. Uh, the document may contain uh, one of the following JSON API uh, root uh, that describes uh, which version of the API are you using like uh, v1, v2, v3 you can define it uh, on your own. Uh, the links the links that are used in pagination the self, uh, previous, next, last and first uh, included included uh, uh, mentions the uh, included related object that you've used. Uh, this is uh, one other example of uh, the J uh, JSON API response. So, uh, uh, what uh, what do we use to display uh, uh, this uh, JSON API uh, into the uh, documentation? So, API Blueprint uh, is is a uh, API API description language uh, for JSON API uh, sp uh, specifically. Uh, this is an example of are generated documentation. Uh, we use uh, AGLIO, AGLIO uh, for uh, rendering uh, the API blueprint file. It's a single file and you uh, mention all the fields and uh, the type of the data uh, that, that they, uh, they should have uh, like integer, string and you, uh, this is the, de uh, uh, here is the uh, description of the user's API. So uh, we first uh, mention the uh, what the API does, uh, what all fields are there, and uh, then you, uh, as you can see here, all the methods of uh, that API will be listed, like uh, list all users, create users, uh, get details. All this is auto generated on every Travis build uh, that we make. Uh, you can also uh, uh, check uh, the uh, and uh, check a simple request and a response uh, via the show hide button uh, that AGLIO provides uh, with itself. So uh, an API is only good as as its uh, documentation. If you don't uh, document what your API is doing, it's it's of no use uh, because our API is a public one. It, it's uh, mainly dependent on that. So, uh, how do we ch uh, check if the API follows the standard uh, that, uh, uh, that we have mentioned? Uh, to, to check uh, if the API follows the uh, standard and the API is updated with every pull request. Uh, so, if, uh, if you make a new pull request and if you don't include the documentation, uh, the build will fail and it will tell you to uh, add the documentation for that. If uh, you, you change anything in an exi existing API, uh, in the uh, re response structure, the uh, 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 build for that pull request will also fail and it will tell you uh, to include that change uh, in your uh, documentation. Uh, 
so our document is documentation is always updated so uh, dread is a command line tool uh, for validating the uh, api blueprint document against uh, our backend implementation uh, so how does uh, dread uh, work so uh, dread basically runs the uh, application ours is a flask application it runs the application and it starts making the request mentioned in the api blueprint file one by one uh, to the server uh, whatever response it gets it checks the uh, validation uh, whether it's uh, compliant to the JSON API specification or not if it's compliant with the JSON API specification the next step it checks whether it complies with the existing written documentation uh, so this is pull, uh, pull request uh, for that feature, uh, we uh, we've used Flask REST JSON API uh, to uh, as a framework uh, uh, for the uh, JSON API specification. So uh, what we uh, wanted, uh, one of the thing uh, that that was there that uh, our data table architecture and the response that we give may uh, uh, vary uh, uh, a great deal uh, we wanted a framework which uh, which the, the doesn't need to be uh, coded that much uh, uh, in in a sense that you mention the fields matching the table and you can have a have an a, a get api ready a, a post api ready uh, and all the api re uh, ready for that after uh, you mention the specific uh, 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 that post and get uh, specification, you can uh, link it to the existing function we already had uh, for uh, uh, working on the post data or the uh, delete request and the raw. Uh, we didn't want to expose all attributes of table. Uh, uh, some attributes were internal. Uh, we wanted to compute additional attributes like uh, uh, non-existing attributes too. Uh, we have a, st a statistics API which uh, tells you how many events are in the whole system, uh, how many uh, tra uh, tr uh, tr uh, tracks are there, how many tracks have, uh, have sorry, sessions have been accepted, uh, rejected, uh, and uh, yeah, how many speakers have been accepted, rejected all of the all of that which is public can be available and other can be available via uh, the jwt to, uh, authentication uh, for the admin users uh, it also enables us to create a uh, resource that uses data from multiple data storage so uh, right now we uh, do have a single db but uh, we may uh, in future uh, uh, yeah, uh, we may be using uh, multiple database and uh, moving to uh, uh, more service-oriented architecture. So uh, this helps in uh, 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 complying with that. Uh, Flask REST JSON API, as uh, Saptak explained uh, in the in the diagram uh, in the previous presentation. It, uh, it it's a crude interface between uh, the resource manager and your data so the, uh, the basic functionality like deleting a resource I, I i don't need to write any code for that if i'm not doing anything additional uh, than uh, del deleting the resource i just ne uh, need to uh, mention the fields that i require and b uh, based on the uh, those uh, that id the field will be deleted uh, we have uh, some uh, permission uh, handlers uh, uh, which we specify along with the specification uh, to uh, make sure that uh, a, a non-authorized uh, user uh, doesn't uh, delete any data or doesn't get any data uh, he she is not uh, supposed to access. Uh, so that's all uh, for, uh, for the JSON API specification. Uh, any questions? Yeah? Uh, how many of you are API 
APIs are just data access layers, type root API, how many uh, more have application logic behind them? Uh, uh, most of uh, 50 to 60 percent uh, of our API uh, are b basic uh, crude applications, and uh, the uh, application logic in them, uh, as in a crude application, I think uh, the application logic in, in them is common. Like uh, if you delete uh, a track uh, or if you delete a, s a session, all, all the uh, related resource uh, with it will be unlinked in our uh, Postgres database and uh, it will just be deleted. We also have another option called uh, soft delete which we uh, modified the flask race json api. Uh, we made a fork of it and we modified it to include that. So soft delete just includes a uh, deleted at timestamp. If the timestamp is there, uh, the object has been soft deleted. Otherwise, uh, it has been not soft deleted. You can mention it via, uh, via a query param. Uh, soft delete equals to uh, no. Uh, if uh, soft delete is no, then the record will be permanently deleted. Yeah, any other questions? Um, so, uh, just the beginning of your talk, you might have covered this. Yeah. Uh, did you consider the return maturity model in the um, development of API? Uh, sorry? Oh. I don't have any idea about it. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a blueprint of how to design APIs. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering if you would do anything about how much how relevant it is today and how much it's going to evolve over the, over the next few um, years. Uh, the main thing uh, the, uh, uh, in the decision making for the JSON API process uh, that we uh, decided to actually use Ember for the front end. Uh, and Ember ha has a, uh, a great support uh, for Ember data. Ember data is a JSON API adapter. So uh, the real reason for uh, initial reason for using uh, the, the JSON API specification was that we are going to use uh, Ember on the front end, and we need it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, bro.